This meeting of the City of Eureka Springs City Council come to order. The clerk will establish a quorum, please. Trey Seller. Here. James DeVito. Here. David Mitchell. Here. Terry McClung. Here. Vicki Snyder. Here. Steve Perky Pyle, absent with notice. All right, everybody please stand for the pledge. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <clears throat> Brings us next to approval of the agenda, motion to discuss. So moved. Second? Yeah, second. Mr. Mitchell. Would it be possible to move up under new business code enforcement since uh, Bobby Ray is here to, to, and rather than have him wait until the end? Then move it up before number one? Yes. Just make it number one? I'll, I'll second that. Are you, are you talking about number one, a new business or? or old business. Uh, unfinished. Un, un, old, old. Unfinished? Yeah, unfinished okay. business. Yeah, thank you. Okay, Mr. Snyder. Under unfinished business, uh, we'd like to remove number six until further notice. I'll second that. Okay. Um, Mr. V. I'd like to add an item to the agenda. <clears throat> uh, moratorium on all CUPs in R1. I'll second that. Sorry, CUPs what? CUPs in R1. R1. Okay, it's made and seconded, so we added number four under new business. Correct. Okay, number three. That's okay. Anybody else? <clears throat> All in favor of the amendment of the agenda say aye. 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 Any opposed like sign? Motion carried. Brings us to approval of the minutes for June the 24th, 2013. Move to approve. Second. Second. Are there any changes, deletions, corrections? If not, all in favor of the agenda, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. Brings us to commission, committee, authority, reports, and expired terms, planning. Ms. Beverly, you are here for... Okay, I just have a few things to tell you about. Um, tomorrow night we have a public hearing at 6 o'clock for a zoning variance. Um, they would like a variance for the 200-foot rule to be waived at 8 Washington Street. On July the 23rd, we have a conditional use hearing for 23 Hillside. They already have uh, four units, and they want to add one more. Um, the rezoning of South Main from R1 to C1, um, that public hearing is going to be on August the 13th. We didn't, um, we had to put it in the paper 30 days notice, and so we didn't get, get it done until for August the 13th. Um, I did want to let you know that on June the 11th, the Planning Commission voted to leave the Eureka Springs Zoning Code just as it was, especially concerning that C3. And then on the 28th of June, we held a public hearing about adding small entertainment to C3 zone. After hearing from the residents close to C3, C3 zones, the Planning Commission felt very comfortable with our vote on 611 to leave the zoning code just as it was and to recommend to Council to leave the Eureka Springs Zoning Code as it is written. That's it. Thank you. Um, unless there's somebody out there from any of the following, there'll be no, no reports. CAPC, hospital, parks, HDC Cemetery. <clears throat> Probably none. We just put the comments and we have. Thank you, Miss Diane, and welcome back. Thank you. Bob Jasinski. <coughs> well, I gotta start where I left off last time, at number five. Uh, last time I was up here, I spoke about the uh, existing ordinance 140809D, which provides for a min minimum. <coughs> penalty of $50 for each zoning code violation. In other words, any Chapter 14 violation, 
there is a provision in there for a minimum fine of $50, and it also says for each day of continuing violation shall be a separate violation. Now, the problem is with this 2184 uh, ordinance, which you voted on twice already, is that it says that there shall be, uh, the, uh, the punishment shall be a misdemeanor. In other words, there was no reason to put a punishment clause in here because it's already covered in the code. But here's where the problem lies. You put a, a provision in there for punishment that says it's a misdemeanor and shall be punishable by a fine up to $500. So what do we have here? We have a conflict. Well, 2184 takes care of the conflict. It says that any ordinance conflicting therewith shall be repealed. So what you're doing, if you vote this ordinance in tonight, 2184, you are repealing the minimum penalty for zoning law violations of $50 a day. There shouldn't have been a penalty provision in here. And there shouldn't have been a repeal of provision added to this order. Repeal of provisions are not necessary. Most people don't put them in there because for exactly this reason, the trouble they can cause. The other uh, point I wanted to make uh, and compare this with what other cities have done that have given this also almost as much thought as you have and, as, and much more attention, I believe, than some of you have. And when they passed an ordinance in most cities, they were able to agree on 30 days with a lot back and forth, making it illegal to rent to transients for less than 30 days. This ordinance here doesn't limit it to transients. It makes it illegal for anyone to rent to anyone for a period of less than 31 days. So my question to you is, and I can't figure it out, are you making week-to-week -week rentals to non-transients illegal? It appears to me that you are. And if you're going to add anyone <coughs> onto this list here, I don't know, I haven't seen a list, but remember, I, we've said it ad nauseum, and I pointed out the law to you, and it's been re repeated by other members of this council here, that you cannot grandfather in an illegal use. And these people with this week-to-week -week lease baloney, uh, you know, should never have been uh, given, you know, the time of day. They tried this in Sedona. They weren't, uh, they, they didn't think anyone would be dumb enough to buy the weekly rental lease deal. And what they did there to try and get around their law was, they said, no, this isn't a weekly rental, a monthly rental. This is an option to purchase. And the court was able to see right through that. But here in Eureka, you can just come up with a piece of paper that says week-to-week -week rental. That doesn't make it legal. So, that's all I have to say. Hopefully you'll think it over before you do anything. Thank you. That'll do it for public comments. <clears throat> business on unfinished business. We move number three under new business up to number one above schedule. So motion Bob. to discuss. Second. Second. Bobby, you ready? Come on up to the mic. Floor is open. Yes, sir. I had asked this to be added to the agenda uh, long before we ended up with Swepco sign gate, and which is over now. So, <laughs> Bobby Ray is, that's not the discussion. I, I'd like to clear that up right quick. The discussion about code enforcement was one of, of five elements that I have thought a lot about in regards to the appearance uh, of the city, the downtown area with uh, one being public works, code enforcement, <coughs> businesses, residents, and then civic groups. And I, I know that Glenn and I are working on that demolition by neglect and cleaning it up, and I know we've had input from Bobby Ray about uh, code enforcement and, and some of the problems he encounters with trying to get compliance and the fact that it takes <coughs> years in some of these structures to, to accomplish anything and it takes a lot of his time and sheer will of calling people, trying to get them to clean up their lawns, or mow the grass, et cetera, et cetera. And a lot of that comes from the fact that our ordinances do not really have a, 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 a section in them that I think our attorneys mentioned in the past. If, sometimes if you don't have penalties and things like that to go along with it, it there's just no, there's no teeth in our ordinances. So, the issue of code in enforcement, is, again, is one element of, of, of five and, and one of two that, of which the city has, has control and can help. And 
and that was part of the reason for here. But I know Mr. Bobby Ray has some news or something for us. Well, I just wanted to give everyone an update on the North Main property. Um, I have spoke with one of the family members. Um, the original landowner has passed, and the family is having a meeting Tuesday afternoon to decide whether to, re to rebuild or, re or fix it or actually do a demolition. Um, if they're kind of swaying toward the fixing it up, but once they get inside there, I think they're going to see it's going to, it's going to be a lot cheaper for them for the demolition. Um, I have kind of on the same subject, uh, as Mr. Jasinski stated, like with the fines, um, I didn't know if you all were aware, um, I have talked to Morris and, and Earl about getting a hold of our judges um, because they set the fines on city ordinance stuff that we enforce through the, the city police department as far as careless and imprudent driving or whatever. And I am uh, in the process of trying to set up a meeting with the judge and see if he will concur on a lot of these city ordinances instead of having from up to $500 that it's a set fine. And then you, you have it for your first offense. Your second offense is even higher or doubled. Um, and I just didn't know if you all were aware of that. That, that. that will help me out a lot because a lot of people right now see that and say, oh, am I going to get a $25 fine or, you know, this is no big deal. I think this will put some teeth into it and it should help. Um. Bobby, you and I have talked several times <clears throat> in regards to enforcement and or lack thereof. Mm -hmm. And would you explain to the people what you were finally able to explain to me this last week in regards to the new uh, computer system we're getting and how that's going to help you? Yes. Uh, uh, the finance department um, had gotten approval from you all to get a new system, web, web system, um, as we have looked through that, it will also integrate the building department into the same system. Um, it kind of a, does away with a paper trail, per se. Um, but it also allows the homeowner, the homeowner can go to the city website, or to this website, and pull up their address and see if there's been permits issued. Um, you know, if they have a contractor that said, yeah, I went and pulled the permit already, they can go to this website and pull it up, pull up just their address, and it'll say whether a permit's been issued. Uh, it allows officers um, that are on patrol, if there's people doing work on the weekend and the, the permit's not posted, they can have dispatch log right in, and it, it tells them where the permit's. It does yard sales. It does, uh, well, essentially almost everything that's paid for down here, whether your water bill's been paid and, and all that. This is really going to, to help out a lot. Um, it'll have uh, a tracking system instead of the paper trail like now when we write out a letter, certified letter, and send it out. I have to make two copies, one to them and one for the property file. Uh, the way I take it, this new system almost essentially does away with the paper part of the property file. And once it's logged in there, just when you type the address into the letter, it automatically sends one to that address inside the system. And explain how this gives you more time for code enforcement. It helps out a lot because <laughs> I can, uh, I like to, to meet with my contractors. I like to see them face to face. Um, I know there was problems before when they had where you could pull permits online. The nice thing about this, it also red flags. If somebody does pull one online, say I'm not here and they pull it online and it comes up, it automatically red flags the girl down uh, at the front desk and says hey, they have a current license, they have a current surety bond, uh, you know, HDC approval or planning and zoning review, it automatically red flags it whether if it hasn't been done. Thank you. And thanks for coming in no. on your vacation. No problem. But <laughs> Mr. DeWitt. Well, I could testify to Bobby enforcing code because uh, we had a little <laughs> visit this weekend because uh, I totally spaced it. I went to the HDC, got the approval, and somehow just walked right past and never got my permit. And uh, so as far as favoritism, I don't think it's happening here because he came down and pointed out that I didn't have a permit. And, uh, 
so uh, he is paying attention without a doubt. Anything else, Mr. Ray? Thank you, Bob. Appreciate it. No problem. It. Thank you. Okay. Now go have fun. Moves us on to number one, <laughs> regular number one, the scheduled town meeting date. Discussion of that, Mr. Rubio. Uh, we met uh, with Mr. Perky Powell, Mr. Mitchell, myself, and the press. Uh, set up a format for the town hall meeting. We'll get it into a uh, precise uh, sheet for everybody to hand out. Uh, Basically, just touching on it, it would be uh, the mayor, the city council, the commission chairs, and the department heads. And we would have a little over, around an hour or so for all of those people to give an update and what they'd like to see happen. And then we'll reserve about an hour to an hour and a half for public comments. So we'll get all this together in a concise manner and then submit it to council for their approval. Thank you, sir. Mr. Mitchell, would you uh, second the motion to discuss that oh, for, yes, pa yes, for I, paperwork? I, yes, Thanks, yes. Yes. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. And this is still on August 19, right? Still on August 19. Correct. Okay. Moves us past number two, which is postponed to number three, third ring of ordinance 2184. Motion to discuss. So moved. Second. Floor is open. Uh, Mr. DeVito. I move to suspend the rules and place ordinance number 2184 on its third reading by title only. Second. So I have to roll call that one. This is his third reading. Yep, I got it right this time. Mr. McClung. Um, yes. Mr. Fito. Yes. Yeah. Ms. Eller. Yes. Ms. Snyder. No. Mr. Mitchell. Yes. Four one. Four one. Thank you, Mr. Devine. Uh, I'm assuming everybody's received the list of the five properties. You should have copies of them. Yes, the, uh, yes I got mine. Amendment D, I believe. Go ahead and read it. Yes, uh, X was changed to D because the uh, what's in the code was reviewed, and D was the next in line. So in section three, the fourth line would say Appendix D. And the addresses, there are five of them, 23 Fairmont, 18 Hale, 18 Nut, and two Singleton addresses, 9 Singleton and 10. Yes, sir. Is this our time to discuss this? I mean, I, I do want to discuss this, but really it's, we need to I think it's the next read, one after you read the ordinance no, title, and then we do it at then, right? We can discuss it. Hmm. The, huh? Okay, we, we jumped over discussion, Mr. Weaver. What? Well, she, uh, she yep. needs to read the title, and then you can have a discussion okay. about it. Right. Ordinance 2184, an ordinance prohibiting weekly rentals of property located within any residential zone. Okay, now, that was on the suspend the rules. We haven't verified it on third reading yet. No, correct. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, um, so now we make the motion to approve on this third reading, and correct. then we discuss. Is that not correct? Yes. No. Yeah. We discuss first, and then approve it, don't we? No. Well, no, because no. we suspend the rules and read it by title only. Right. Correct. So now the second question would be to for approve. To approve on the third reading. Correct. A motion to uh, a motion to approve ordinance number twenty one eighty four on the third and final reading. Second. Okay. Now discussion. Ms. Knight. Okay. As usual, I'm going to do it again. I want to know why we are targeting one certain type of lodging over all of the other ones. I have yet to get a responsible answer or a coherent answer or an answer that makes any sense whatsoever. I don't care if it's restricted from R1 <clears throat> and allowed in R2 or 3 as long as it's not done away with. That's discriminatory and unfair and there are a lot of people and a lot of families that need a week here with a kitchen rather than taking their 5 billion kids out to eat. 
everybody's screaming and hollering and moaning and everything else about not having enough money coming in and not enough tax money, and you're doing away with one whole huge monetary faction by taking away weeks. Families with kids cannot afford a week here in restaurants three times a day. They need a kitchen. You're talking a pile of money that you're saying, we don't care. So I will continue to be against this. I don't care if y'all care pass it or not. I will be against it and doing everything we can to make it fair. Now, if you want to restrict it in R1, that's understandable. It's got a lot of restrictions there. People who are renting out a secondary little building for a week to families are not kicking their families out to do this. So this doesn't make sense either, saying this is ruining our neighborhoods. Obviously, the little piece of property is available. Um, some people would like to do this kind of thing, be it a week or a month, simply so they can be paying for their property until they get a chance to finally move here. You're not allowing that to happen. Like I said, this thing is discriminatory from start to finish. In so many ways, it's unbelievable. Um, that being said, I would like to ask the attorney, did you have a clarification or change or whatever you call it that needed to be made in regards to the 31 days? I think the language could read 30. It's not required to. Well, ex explain I, what I, we talked about. I originally had put 30 in there. Right. And I think 30 is sufficient to prevent what the council has been talking about. And it got changed at the table to 31, and I'm not sure that there was a real good reason why it was changed. But. Uh, question for the city attorney. Uh, the points raised by Mr. Jasinski on the penalty phase of that is, do you see any problems? I do see that uh, what he says as far as this particular ordinance, there will be no statutory minimum, but it will not remove the statutory minimum for the remainder of the code. Those are each set individually. Um, but if uh, you look at the argument that he's making, that a judge could say, well, the penalty is zero or one dollar, the judge can always impose a fine and then suspend it if he wants to anyway. So honestly, under the code, the, the $50 minimum that he was talking about, a judge could always impose that and then suspend the whole thing anyway, and you would end up with the same dollar amount of potential fine. Uh, so honestly, I, I don't see that it's a major point. We would move to amend ordinance number 2184. Uh, regarding the 31 days and change it to 30 days. Second. So I have to call for roll call. Then. Maybe just a voice vote on this since it's not dealing with the ordinance. Getting the ordinance to Sanders itself is just an amendment within the ordinance. Yeah. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Yes. Okay. Um, on this. Uh, Appendix D, um, the uh, <coughs> well, it's already been cleaned up. I didn't look at it just now. This is the new one. Fair like that. Okay, I'm happy. Any further on this one? Yes, ma'am. Um, well, I have another question. Are we? Am I interrupting? We're still in the discussion. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was under the impression we started this that what we were trying to do was prevent uh, short-term rentals within an R1, which in our zoning laws is called R1 Victorian Residential. Um, this ordinance deals with R1, R2, and R3, as it reads here. Are we saying that um, you can't rent for less than 30 days in R1, R2, and R3? And are then we negating the whole bed and breakfast industry from the residential area? Because uh, we allow bed and breakfast in R1 and R2, and uh, apparently R3, 
Uh, and generally, bed and breakfast rent for a weekend. So are we saying that anybody who's in a residential area and has a bed and breakfast can't rent for anybody for less than 30 days? That's the way I'm reading this. No. If you look at the, uh, I believe it's paragraph 2. No. Uh, that would allow that the existing uses within those districts to continue, whether they're by CUP or whether they're by... Uh, right under the uh, zoning that is currently in place. This is preventing uh, rental that would be outside those already granted specific rights. In other words, if I have a be bed and breakfast uh, operating in an R2 area and we pass this ordinance, I can ignore it? I can still go ahead and rent it for does, weekends? It, it does not apply to you. Because I'm already in business? Because you're already legally under operation of the code. Okay, so this only appeals to people who are starting up a bed and breakfast in a residential area. You, you already have to follow the various rules to get a bed and breakfast. Particularly, yeah. you can't get one in R1 at this point. Well, yeah, but it isn't clear to me whether I can operate an R2 and R3 from this ordinance. If I want to start a bed and breakfast now, this ordinance doesn't make it clear. It's um, legal non-conforming use existing on the effective date of this ordinance, uh, colon, on legally operating re rental businesses and dwelling units, R1, R2, and R3, for 30 days less in uses, and et cetera. Um, OK. I'm not sure my question is answered here. In other words, we are not interfering with business as it goes on in Eureka Springs in the bed and breakfast industry, except that we are telling them that in R1 they cannot rent for less than 30 days. Does that restate what this ordinance does? It is preventing you from... Uh That's a fair reading. Okay, now what about the thing that was brought up at the Planning Commission meeting that if you uh, rent from a bed and breakfast and you are a transient, you automatically become a resident the minute you sign any kind of an agreement to rent. Mm -hmm. That was brought up at the Planning Commission meeting, <coughs> so as a way around this just to make any Body who wants to rent your property to sign a rental agreement and then they're or, or, or a resident and now it doesn't apply to them. They can rent for a week if they want to or two weeks. No, the, the purpose of this ordinance would be to say that whether they're a resident or not, they can't rent f during that 30 days. Oh, okay, but it they're, doesn't. It is not defining who, whether they're resident or transient. Well, don't you think we should have this in the whereas part because the meat of an ordinance is the whereas because it, it uh, demonstrates what the intent of the law was and what we're trying to do is prevent people from work renting by the week and then changing off and having a new tenant the next week. So don't we need to say this in the whereas part to make it really clear what we intend? Actually, the whereas is a legislative tool used by the court to interpret things, but it's not the meat of the law. The meat of the law is the subsections. The subsections define what the law is, and if the court is unable to interpret something, they can look at either the meeting minutes, or in our case, they have in the past looked at the actual recordings of the council meetings to get the intent of what the council was looking at. They do the same thing with the state legislature if they're trying to interpret a state law. They'll look at the minutes and on older laws, and now that most of them are recorded, they will look at the recordings. Okay. Well, I'm just, um, I'm not arguing with you or trying to sound like I know what I'm talking about here because I probably don't. However, my point of view is in the head of the person who is absolutely determined to get around this law and do what they want to do regardless of what the ordinance says. And I'm just looking for uh, a way they can find to just simply go ahead and do their weekly rentals regardless. And this isn't about what the tourists want. 
uh, and this comes up a lot. Well, the tourists don't like this, the tourists don't want this. What we're trying to do in these R1 neighborhoods is preserve them for the people who live there. We, the city council was the court of last resort for these people who live there. They have no one else to turn to when their neighborhood starts to deteriorate. And we're trying to prevent this constant turnover of residents in these houses here. And we're trying to limit this. And I'm just not convinced that we say enough, that we have enough words in this ordinance to make that really clear to somebody who is absolutely bound and determined, comes in from out of town, is going to show the local yokels how to go around the local law. That's what I'm saying. Snow, okay, you, I'm done. You're next, Ms. Snow. <clears throat> so what this thing is saying, and I'm looking at the attorney, what this thing is saying in Section 1, that henceforth it shall be a misdemeanor to rent property as a dwelling within any residential zone within the city of Eureka Springs and goes on with the fine yada yada for a period of 30 days or less. Section 2, that this ordinance shall not amend the conditional use, uses permitted in R1, 2, and 3. So is this saying then, in effect, uh, it's not just weeklies, it's B&Bs, anything else? If you are not established as of today, does that mean because of this, if this gets passed, nobody can do anything less than a month? That was my question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No. Well, that's what it says. No. no, I don't believe that's what it says. It, it says, says it will not amend You're arguing the, with an attorney. the CU uh -huh, <laughs> on an equal basis. It will not amend the conditional uses permitted. It's not changing them from what they are now under the current code. Okay, so what you're saying is if in R2 or 3 it says if your neighbors agree you can do a B&B, &B, that's still being permitted. That's still being permitted. Okay, so why are we restricting it to weeklies? If they can do a B and B, why can't they do a weekly? Throwing it right back at you guys. It's discrimination. Should it be doing your next? Uh, Joyce, maybe I can help you out just a little bit. Uh, Arkansas law with the landlord tenant is what prompted all of this, that okay. people were saying that they were in effect establishing the landlord-tenant relationship even though they were transient guests. Mm -hmm. And the difficulty lie, lay in the enforcement because when you're renting for under a week, it's kind of, well, you know, a lot of tourists want to do, oh, four or five days. Well, you could stretch four or five days, call it a week, and people thought that they were getting away with the way the law was written about weekly rentals. But the abiding thing here is transient versus non-transient. So in an effort to make this easier to enforce, we're going to 30 days. And now this is still in relationship to the landlord-tenant relationship. This does not affect the CUP process for B&Bs. People will still be able to go through the entire process, which is a lengthy process of a public hearing, notifying all your neighbors, and potentially you could still get a B&B. &B. So this speaks to the difficulty we were having with people who felt like they were renting on a weekly basis. The only issue was they were renting to tourists, which was in violation of our law. So there's really no Eureka law. We're functioning under the state law of the landlord-tenant relationship, and that's what was being violated. So in order to make that easier for code enforcement, we moved it up to 30 days. We've not eliminated weekly rentals in Eureka Springs. There's still plenty of weekly rentals in C1 and other various locations. So. Mm -hmm. and, and you can rent a B&B &B for a week or a month or however long you want or stay in a hotel for however long you want. This was dealing with the, the herd of people that were rushing to take advantage of what they thought was a loophole, which in reality was not a loophole. It was a violation of our laws. And this is an effort to make this more enforceable. 
We're not eliminating weekly rentals. Don't get that wrong. There will still be weekly rentals in Eureka Springs. There will still be the potential for B&Bs when you go through the process of applying for a b and I'm happy to report that we were looking at more than a dozen properties, and it's been pared down to five through the actions of, of, of the, the Planning Commission and reviewing all of that and determining whether it was truly a landlord tenant relationship. So we've weeded out a number of people who were kind of skirting the law. And, and I think this will go a long way to ensuring the integrity of our neighborhoods. Mr. McClung, you're next. And then Mr. Mitchell, you'll be next. Well, uh, all I was going to say in, in addition to that is that you know, you're always going to have those that are going to try and cheat the system. And, and they, and they uh, you know, if they can if they can rent their place without even buying the licenses or that, they're cheap looking. They catch them, we may not, but mm -hmm. you know that's just that's just part of the deal. Okay. Um, Mr. Mitchell, I agree with most everything uh, Alderman Devito said, except we never issued a citation to anybody to know whether they were legal or not legal. We asked our attorney to help us with the situation, and he brought back the same ordinance that was looked at back in '012 and brought it back to us. And we have it before us now, and it is wrapped up. And Alderman Dividos right. We've got pared it down to five properties. And, and considering where it was and where we're at, this is a, a good way to wrap and close that process. Ms. Schneider. Pretty it up as much as you want by restricting weeklies, except for in the C, C123, whatever. You are discriminating and you're cutting out a faction of people that it's not fair to do. Give it its own requirements, its own CUP. Restrict it from R1. That's fine. Everything else is restricted. Stick it in R2 and 3 if they want. You're not hurting the neighborhoods. And I take great umbrage at calling people who know how to read the law and use it to their own benefit cheaters. That is not cool, and it's been said several times by several people. Just because you know how to use the law doesn't mean that you're cheating because you find a loophole that some city government eons ago didn't make clear. Can we have a motion and a second on the floor to approve on third read? I don't know that we do. As amended? Uh, I think we did. Well, we approved the amendment. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it would go to the initial I motion. I think we did the motion to approve on the third, then we had discussion. And a second end discussion. So now I think we're to the vote. Correct. Did you? You are correct. Okay. So all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? No. We need to roll call action. Oh, roll call? Okay. Sorry. What are we voting on now? Approving. The approving on third oh. Okay, yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Mr. McClung? Yes. Mr. Vito? Yes. Ms. Schneider? Of course not. No. Four, one. Moves us on to number four, ordinance for commercial recycling glass cardboard. Motion to discuss. Um, I'll table this since we don't have an ordinance in place. Table it to the next meeting. Okay. Second. We have to. Okay. Okay. So it is posted poon. All right. <laughs> and number five is postponed. Am I correct? They've had the public hearing though. Yeah. Not on okay. this. So it really not on this. Have you had the public hearing on that one? Okay. So it is... Okay, you want to address what went on at the uh, planning meeting? Motion to discuss. Second. Okay. Somehow, um, this one and the next <coughs> one kind of got pushed together at your table. Um, 80 Mountain Street, I gave you... Um, 
this information several times before. It's listed on your code book on page 400 as um, a permitted use within R1 and that it's a building used for religious services. Um, 80 Mountain Street has been C3 since 2006 and it's no longer used for religious services so we did want that to be um, removed but you would have to send it to the city attorney for an ordinance to be um, drawn up. When we brought this <coughs> you asked that we look at things about C3 if it could fit in to C3 and that's what the public hearing was about and we did have that public hearing. Mr. Mitchell. Beverly, so at this point we're just clearing that building up because it's non-religious. We're not over in what goes on in C3 or any of the other stuff because that's still over at planning. Well, it, actually you voted no to small entertainment. But it, it is my understanding that this week Elise Rennick is having a meeting with the neighbors that are impacted by that building, and it's taking place Thursday. And, the, and, and one of the neighbors that was most impacted is coordinating that with the neighbors to meet with her. And, and so it, it's, it probably behoove us. That's why we took, uh, asked to take uh, the C3 discussion off, because it would be premature for for if really for council to have any discussion about C3 or what's going on because we ought to allow the neighbors to meet with Ms. Rennick on that. So right now you're just asking us to take that building off of uh, the religious list, period. Okay. Right, there's a list in R1 for yes. buildings used for religious services. Okay. That, that 80 Mountain Street is not in R1 and it's not used for religious services. Thank you. So you would have to send that to your city attorney to get that done. Okay. Mr. McClellan. Does that not, can that just not be stricken because it's no longer pertinent? I mean, it's, the zoning's been changed. It's no longer R1 where it's permitted. And now it's C3 where so what? it's just like our use of grandfathers there's a, a everything has an appendix of grandfathered things and we go over those once a year and look at them <clears throat> to see if anything's yeah. changed or anything's right and this one was just brought to our attention this year can't we, can't we just do that by a, a simple vote here at council and, and have it removed because it's no longer <coughs> pertinent or does it take an ordinance it will take an ordinance unless the ordinance that was passed approving the court settlement that changed it from R1 to the C category had a clause in it that allowed for repeal of all conflicts. If it had a repeal clause, it can be removed. Did, it, did we have an ordinance to do it? Yes, there was an ordinance that settled the court case. I, don't know that answer. I would move to table this item until our next agenda so <coughs> we can find out if said ordinance exists. It would be number five. Second. N number five, correct. Okay. Well. Made and seconded, Mr. Mitchell. Was I'll, it I'll second, second that, okay. yes, sir. All right. And we postponed number six. Is that correct? Just making sure that we're all on the same page. Moves us to number seven, be third read of Ordinance 2185. Love to discuss. Second. Second. Floor is open. This would be the third reading. Mr. Duita. I would move to suspend the rules and place Ordinance number 2185 on its third reading by title only. Second. Second. Right. Be a roll call. Yes. Mr. Snyder. Yes. Ms. Zeller. Yes. Mr. McClung. <coughs> yes. Mr. Mitchell. Yes. Five zero. Mr. DeVito. 
Uh, she has to read it first. Okay. I thought you had your hand up. Ordinance removing, ordinance number 2185, ordinance removing front corner setback requirements in certain zoning districts. Mr. DeVito. Move to approve ordinance number 2185 on its third reading. Second. Schneider. Yes. Mr. Mitchell. Yes. Mr. McClung. Yes. Mr. DeVito. Yes. Ms. Zeller. Yes. Five zero. All right. Thank you. Moves us to number eight. Will be the ordinance setting rate for limo business licenses. So moved. Second. Second. Doors open. Yes. Sir. Um. Nope, he has the ordinance. You in have hand. A, an ordinance that uh, the clerk looked at a little while ago. Pass them around. You can pass them around. Thank you. <clears throat> Do you have one of these? Yes, sir. I went ahead and plugged in line item number 120 in section 1. This will be Ordinance 2186. I'm sorry, what was that number? 2186. Thank you. An ordinance setting. Do we have to vote to. Oh, sorry. To uh, assign a number. I'd move to assign this ordinance a number and place it on its first reading. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Uh, what happened to discussion? We, we now oh. discussion. Now we're discussion. Sorry, yeah. dyslexia is in high gear. <laughs> okay. okay. I, that was a 5 0? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, it's been rough this last week. Um, Madam Clerk, what is the title on Ordinance 2181, the, what was previously called um, the Taxi Limo Ordinance? Did we keep that name or did we change it? This is not the time for discussion. Yeah, it does pertain yeah. to the discussion. This, this is so. the time for discussion. We didn't observe it. <laughs> the vote was to assign a number and place it on his first reading. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. All right. no, I'm messing my bed. All right. So we've got to read it first, then discuss it. Okay. okay. I'm sorry. I've got to hit myself, too. <laughs> ordinance number 2186, an ordinance setting business license fee for limousine businesses. Whereas the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas has reviewed the current license fees set out in 4.36 of the Eureka Springs Municipal Code and whereas the City Clerk has recommended revisions thereto and whereas it has been determined that it is in the best interest of the City to amend the code. Now therefore be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs, Arkansas. Section 1, line item separation that the fee schedule in subsection 4.36.04 is hereby amended by separating current line item 115 into two separate line items as follows. Line item 115 for the taxi service and line item 120 for the limousine service. Section 2, fee. The license fee for each line item separated hereby shall be $50. Section 3, severability clause. In the event that any section, subsection, paragraph, subdivision, clause, phrase, or other provision or portion of this ordinance shall be adjudged invalid or unconstitutional the same shall not affect the validity of this ordinance code section or chapter as a whole or any part of provision other than the part so decided to be invalid or unconstitutional and the remaining provisions of this ordinance code, code section or chapter shall remain in effect. Section 4, repeal clause. All ordinances, resolutions and parts thereof and conflict herewith are hereby repealed to the extent of such conflict. Mr. DeVito. Move to approve ordinance number 2186 on its first reading. Second. Discussion. <laughs> now we can discuss. Miss Okay. Okay. So, um, the taxi limo title originally is. Did we keep that on there when we did the 
2181, you know, describing jumbo taxis and all that. It used to be called the Taxi Limo Ordinance. I'm not understanding your question. I'm sorry. Okay, is it, is it still, on it, on, when we did the stuff on 2181 for the jumbo taxi and the limousine describing, this is still called the taxi limo thing. There's always been discussion for years on when did limo get added into the taxi ordinance. That's ancient history. <laughs> you have accomplished cleaning that up. That's what I'm saying. That. So is it any longer called taxi limo ordinance? That's history. It's got done. There's no name here. This is just it? I mean, that's the name of it now? I don't know how to put this right. They're no longer co-joined. They are now separate entities. There is no there taxi, taxi limo. Two separate entities. Okay. They are now separate. <clears throat> well, we just read then. Well, okay, this is for the taxi cabs? 2181. What is that that is being a problem? There's no, that doesn't say do we taxi have, limo anywhere. That's what I'm asking. Do we have an ordinance on limos, and do we have an ordinance on taxis, or are they the same thing with everything inclusive? We have really covered this territory repeatedly. That separated the two. There is not a standalone ordinance regulating the two entities separately. That's there is not I an entity know. defining taxis and everything and there's not an entity defining limousines and everything that's involved in that. It's simply two separate business categories now. That's all. Two different line items. With two licenses. Okay. Just I understand that there, is a, that there is a need on some people's part to nail down limousines and regulate them, but what is happening here today has nothing to do with that. Okay. What I'm referring to, okay, is Ordinance 2181. How's the taxi count? cabs, and it explains what a jumbo is and yeah. the limousine being used or not used as a taxi, okay? Is this the only ordinance we have right now for taxis and limos? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> like I said, I didn't know how to put it. Okay. Then my question is, <laughs> since limousines can be used as taxis when used by the taxi company, and I'm going to have problems again, if you try to get two separate uh, fees, uh, line item fees, for two items that are allowed by one company to be owned, is that not double taxation? That's not what's happening. I mean, it would not be, but the way that your ordinances are written, the uh, companies that have taxi uh, certificates that allow them to operate, their, their limos are not limos. They're jumbo cabs. So they do not fall under the same requirements. Okay, so but yes, you have often, a lot of businesses in town will have to have two separate licenses to operate, in, and that's allowable. So if we have a taxi, let's say we have three taxi companies. Two of them have taxis and limos, <clears throat> but the limos are under the jumbo taxi cab thing. So they pay a taxi? So they pay one fee. But if we have someone who only has taxis, they pay the same fee, but if someone gets a limo, they pay that. But if they have both, but they're not using it as a jumbo, then they pay it twice? They can't use it as a jumbo unless they have a taxi. Uh, permit. Okay, so when, okay, so then the only time that a limo license fee would be charged is if that's all that you have is a limo. Mm -hmm. We have two companies right now that are allowed to operate taxis. Those two companies will need a taxi license under this, an 11 or a 115 license. Oh. The other companies in town that do not have the permits to use taxis will need the 120 permit. Okay, so the you people not with both, both aren't being charged no. twice. Okay. Good. That takes care of double taxation. Thank you. Mr. <laughs> I, I have the question of is that per unit or is that just a, that's just a general license? Uh, the way this is written, it's just a general license. Now, a lot of cities 
would charge a lot more for this, but this is what the code, and this is what Madam Clerk, I think, had uh, proposed to you last time was the $50. Just to put it in perspective, Harrison doesn't even have business licenses. So they don't regulate, they don't charge anything for businesses. So, you know, our fees are, are not exorbitant. So, you know, I, I think it's fair. Any further? So now we'll need to... Approve on the first approve reading. Approve on the first reading. Need a motion to approve yeah, on the first reading. That was Got the it. motion. Okay, okay. Got it. Now I'll vote. We just need to vote. We'll get a second. Who? Terry. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. It's a five zero. All right. Approve on the first reading. Moves us to number nine be an update on the 0 0.58 acres with city lift station easement. <clears throat> Motion to discuss. A second. You need a second to discuss. Second. Oh, second. Okay. Sorry. Right. Uh, I gave this to Mr. Allen to do some research on, and this is what he sent me. Uh, said, Morris, I've taken liberty. Uh, no, he didn't say liberty. I took at the liberty <laughs> offer. <laughs> I was correct. Rocky Whiteley owns 30 plus acres, of whom we have non exclusive 15 feet easement in place. It gives us access to our lines and station of property. Miss Liberty has is not located at our station, which is on the south end of the property. Hers is less than an acre of the old treatment facility for the Ramada. We never have, we have never owned that and would never have wanted to own it. It would be a liability and we should have, to, if we, oh, I can't read it right now. Okay. It would be a liability and, and we would have to maintain the area. Our easement is enforceable if needed. Call me if we have any questions. So, our station is not on her property. So, and I, I, I checked with the uh, assessor's office, and the original amount of the twenty two thousand or the twenty thousand five hundred value is greatly diminished. It's, and the the assessor said it was probably worth around two thousand. And this is from her. So, uh, we can make up our mind if you want to buy it or not. So, there it is. Yes, ma'am. Is what he's saying is that we really don't have to buy it if we don't want to? True. That we have it's access not, it's to It's not part of our easement. It's totally in a separate... Okay, so piece. if we don't buy it, we won't ever get in any trouble or any problems with... No, we, we have a... Um, from Mr. Whiteley, we have the 15-foot easement in place. Okay, and it's, okay. And it's enforceable from now on. Okay, yes, well, then... So is there any reason why we would want or need this property? That would be totally up to y'all. No, that's not what I mean. Okay. Did the building inspect or the... No, uh, he's, he just said that it would be a live building. A lot, okay. we would okay. have to maintain it. Okay. So there's no need for us to actually get it. I'm you the report. Okay. Apparently it's a moot point now, so we can move on. Move on. Okay. Unless y'all won't take any further action on it. Okay. Right. Do you want to vote Moving on. on. No. Thank okay. you. The new business, uh, number one, is discussion of the 200-foot rule in all residential zones. Motion to discuss. So moved. Second. Floor is open. Yes, sir. I want to ask the planning chair to come to the microphone to discuss the request. Yes, please. I send you a statement about this on june the 11th eureka springs planning commission met in regular session and voted five to nothing to recommend to council to extend the 200 foot rule to all residential zones in 2001 when the original ordinance was passed it was done to protect the neighborhoods from too much commercial influence at that time the majority of the problem was in r1 and that was the only zone addressed. Today, we've seen more commercial um, in our residential zones, and we believe it would help with this situation if we would go ahead and extend that 200-foot rule to all the residential zones. And what the 200-foot rule says is you, cannot, you will not be given a CUP if there's already something within 200 foot on that same street. So if there's a B&B &B 
at one house and you want to put a B and B at the next house, you will not be given a CUP for that. So it's it's trying to limit how much commercialism can come into the neighborhoods. We think it's a good idea, but it, it takes your approval and for you to send it to the city attorney to have that written up. Mr. Mitchell. <clears throat> It sounds great with all the discussion that's been going on and all the public input recently about the invasion into the residential areas, be it R1, R2, or R3. That it, it makes total sense. And you had 5 1 vote in five planning. Zero. 5 0. 5 0, five zero sorry. 5 0 to, to move it forward. Thank you. Would you clarify the neighbors within the 200 foot? Um, because this has been talked about before, the people within 200 feet have a right to say something versus... That has nothing to do with what I'm asking oh, that, you for. That's what I wanted to clarify because it keeps bouncing back and forth. That has nothing to do with what I'm asking you for. What I'm asking you for, this 200-foot rule is about what businesses, what Business. conditional use permits can be... Okay. given and it has to be on that str the street the frontage streets within 200 foot in any direction and it what it will do is just limit the amount of commercial businesses that will be allowed to go into the residential areas thank you mm -hmm. um, that doesn't mean that they can't get a variance for that in fact you've got one that's that's have one tomorrow night. Tomorrow night, and an R1. The Board of Zoning and Adjustment is, is says that we have the authority to grant a variance to setbacks or to something if the if they can you know prove that there is a really really valid reason for that. Sure. And, and that, of course, and that still doesn't doesn't that they have all the other bells and or hoops that, to jump through you know parking requirements and everything of that nature too. Any property does if they when they make a request for a CUP. Correct. Mr. Reader. I would make a motion to have the city attorney draw up uh, ordinance uh, extending the two hundred foot rule uh, to all residential zones. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Can you post? Motion carried. <coughs> Move fast. Yeah. All right. Oops. Moves us to number four. Moratorium on CUPs in R1 districts. Motion to discuss. So moved. Second. Floor is open. Um, oops. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. Well, you know, this is just an extension of all we've been discussing of. of what's been going on in our residential zones and uh, it's my understanding that planning will be discussing eliminating uh, CUPs from R1 and we saw what happened the last time planning went into discussion about regulating weekly rentals there was a stampede uh, to get uh, because the word got out and uh, it's not going to be any different with this one either. Uh, you know, once I get that application in, we can't stop it. So I feel that it's in the best interest of the city that we pass a moratorium. I'm not going to say how many days, but I think it's imperative uh, that we do something tonight because uh, otherwise there's going to be more encroachment in the residential zones. As council people, we need to look at the entire city. And that means our commercial zones. And anybody driving through our community has got to be aware of what's happening in our commercial zones. We've got so much property that is vacant in the commercial zone. And part of that is because of people encroaching into the residential areas so 
don't just focus on the residential areas alone. Look at the city. Look at the impact of everything that happens in a residential zone and how it affects our commercial zones. Because every time you allow somebody to house somebody in a residential zone, that's a commercial zone that's not getting the potential of a client. And, and we've got hundreds and hundreds of motel rooms sitting vacant that if we can close some of these loopholes in our residential zones that will encourage investment in our commercial zones where they can do weekly rentals, where they can do nightly rentals, where they can, you know, have, have a multitude. But we've got to stop the hemorrhaging in our residential zone, and that's why I'm asking for a moratorium. Mr. Mitchell. I... I 100% agree with Alderman DeVito on this issue, and council has already learned, as, as he eloquently said, that the folly of not putting a moratorium on something and allowing it to, uh, to progress, it would be a very safe move, can always be rescinded, but it would be a very safe move at this point to put a moratorium on all CUPs in R1 at this time as we go through the discussion and of, of this process. It's just a safe move. Ms. Snyder. Okay, dyslexia or not, I'm thoroughly confused. I thought CUPs in R1 were already restricted as in no more no, new. No. What am I thinking of? Just tourist lodging in R1. Oh, so these were not restricted. Okay, so, that was the difference. I'm sorry, Mayor, I didn't mean to. <clears throat> no, okay. <clears throat> so I'm, okay, wait. wait. <laughs> okay. I'm finished. So that part, so what you're just saying is, well, let's hold off on any kind of CUP that is still allowed until we settle this. Okay. My other question or problem or whatever, I hate seeing people say. You can't stay here, but you can stay up there. But I don't want to stay up there. I want to stay down here where it's cool. No, you got to stay up there. To me, when you start talking R123 versus C123, this is what we're doing. We've got to be able to come up with some kind of something because not everybody wants to stay up on the freaking highway. And it's not fair or right to tell them whether it's people wanting to do a business or people coming here to stay at a business. It is fair or right to say you have to build your B&B &B up on the highway. No, you can't do it down here. We don't want you down here. I don't, I'm either missing something or I'm just really sensitive, but it just seems really unfair to me to take that kind of attitude. Mr. McClellan. Is it, is, are we, is, is the planning commission Beverly Wanting to do away with bed and breakfast in R1? Yes, yes go ahead. Yeah. We do have this on our agenda to speak to tomorrow night to find out, but I would like you to know that I do have a conditional use permit hearing on July the 23rd for 23 Hillside. It's already in the works. They've already paid their their money and, and their set to do that but I did you know I've been thinking about this a lot because it is on our agenda and we've been working on it in 2009 we had 107 CUPs in R1 in 2009 that is a lot today we have 28 CUPs in R1 so it is a lot less CUPs. I mean, there are some more grandfathered properties, plus those 28, plus the grandfathered properties, but it's not like it used to be. So we have taken the list down a lot, and I don't know what the outcome from the Planning Commission is going to be because we just put it on our agenda last week to discuss it this week. But I just want you to know that I do have something already in the works for one of these. If y'all put pass a moratorium, I don't exactly know what that does with this one. Beverly, but isn't that, oops, 
Sorry. Okay. Mr. Nader, I think you hit something. Well, I was just going to say that sometimes this isn't about what the tourist wants to do. This is about the people who thought they were moving to an old Victorian town and bought a house here, and suddenly the whole thing is falling down around them because everybody wants to have commercial property. Uh, sometimes, if you're a tourist and you want to live there and it's against our law, I'm sorry, you can't do it. It's the same, um, I don't know, sometimes I feel like I'm, I think I've said this several times in about a thousand conversations I've had this last week on this subject, that it's like when I was raising my teenagers and the reason why I had to let them do something regardless of whether it was against the law or not is because their life would be over if I couldn't, if I didn't say yes. I'm sorry, we have our rules. This is where you can stay and the people in that neighborhood want it that way. They're, they bought houses, they paid money, they want their neighborhood protected and we are the last resort to protect it for them. And yeah, I'm in favor of this. I think we have to have a moratorium until the dust settles on this ordinance that we're about to pass, or we did pass, and see what happens. And then we can get back to this and see what needs adjustment. Any more questions from Ms. Blankenship? Thank you, ma'am. Yes. It's no coincidence that the majority of the B&Bs were at the number that they were in 2008. And we went into one of the biggest recessions this country has ever seen. And that definitely impacts tourism, and it definitely impacted, and I think it's a primary cause for the reduction of B&Bs in R1. What is occurring is a new influx into Northwest Arkansas. Uh, Northwest Arkansas was just listed last week as the number three place in the United States for job creation. And what with all that's occurring in the Bentonville area and Crystal Bridges and what with all the big corporate offices here, properties moving like gangbusters. And the pressure is going to build once again. And if we don't do something, particularly in R1, I'm not saying R2 or R3, there's still the potential for people if they want to invest in B&Bs that they can do. And this is just a moratorium until we understand where we are and where we're going with this community. But if we don't do something proactive, we're going to be chasing our tail again like we did. You saw how difficult it was to regulate this weekly rental property. It, it was going on for well over a year. So I, I feel that our 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 the densest residential neighborhoods are our one, and, and we need to make an effort to protect it. And that is why we should be entertaining this moratorium. It's not a permanent moratorium. Uh, and, and we'll let planning do their thing. Uh, we'll, we'll see how that goes. And you know, maybe 90 days, 180 days, however many days we want this moratorium to be in effect, it'll give us time to assess where we want to go as a community. But I don't want to go through this again where there's going to be a land rush of people trying to get their foot in the door because we saw how it happened in, in the past, and it's not going to be any different with this one. Mr. Schneider. Okay, just to make it clear, I don't have a problem at this point with the moratorium in our one. Your thing about this upcoming one, I believe because it's already active, regardless of what we do, it would not be interfered with. Okay, my question though is, what about the people who desperately want to buy a Victorian home and can't afford it unless they could do like a and b in one section? <laughs> I mean, that's the way I look at people having a b and b They're in Victorian, the ones in Victorian homes anyway. Um, I keep hearing the, the same thing over and over. We wanted a Victorian so bad, but the only way we could afford to make the payments was to do a B&B. &B. And if, even if we only do it for five or ten years, you know, that would help with the payments. But, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, that, that I just have a problem saying too bad. Well, I want a, of the, I want a penthouse in New York City, <laughs> and I can't afford it. 
Why? So, you, had, you, had, you, had, you, had, you know, of, gee, the, why? Ladies, why? of the of the 20 or 25 B and B's in, in the, the area, over 20 of them are for sale. They won't have any trouble buying a B and B in an old Victorian house. So, so I guess I, I'm serious that there's, if you want a B and B, you've got a, a a huge range of them from pricing anywhere from 400 thousand up to a million so no problem Mr. video you have a motion yes i'd move to have the city attorney uh can we do it on a voice or do you need to pin a ordinance we'd be better to pin an ordinance or a resolution actually but you can do it by a voice vote if you want you do probably need to decide whether you want to include stopping action on the one that's in process which you could do but probably might land you before a judge. I would make a motion to call for a 90-day moratorium on all CUPs in R1, excluding uh, pending applications. I'll second that. A, Is it a resolution? Well, it, it effective immediately. A resolution, correct. Okay. Got a motion and a second, Mr. Mitchell? Can we have discussion now? Yes. We've got a second here. Second. Yeah, we'll get, yeah. we already have a second. Yeah. Go I, ahead. I agree with the moratorium. I did the 90 days, I would have I would have much preferred six months, 180 days. But we can extend it. We can extend it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is uh, for James, did you say resolution or just a voice vote? Resolution. Well, I mean... I'd rather, I'd prefer a voice, voice vote. I'll rescind and, uh, my motion and uh, just. Wait, uh, make another one. Uh, Actually, you, you can use the word resolution okay. without, without it having to be I'll a stand. written document. Okay. okay. Just if, if you're okay with it, or it's effective immediately tonight, the vote is taken. Okay. If you run into a problem, you're going to know it because they're going to make an application. And then you're good. Okay. Okay. Schneider. When you said the the pending applications, did you want to make that pending as of seven eight thirteen? Well, it'd be pending as of our vote, which would in effect create the moratorium. So if there's pending applications prior to right now, they they would pass. Right. They'd get a pass on that. Anything else? Okay. Resolution is for 60 days or 90, 90 days? days? Okay. Uh, not going, okay. For a 90-day 90 90 moratorium day effective okay. immediately for CUPs and R1 with the exception of those applications that are pending. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Better if you take a roll call, actually. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think you just threw that one in. Yeah, it's st it'd still be better if we end up recording. <laughs> okay. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Ms. Zeller? Yes. Ms. Schneider? Yes. Mr. DeVito? Yes. Mr. McClung? Yeah. 5-0. Okay, takes us out of new business, moves us into agenda setting. In your packets. Okay, on. motion to discuss first. So moved. Is there a second? Second. In your packet, you have a complete copy of the uh, the plans, the architectural plans from Mr. Uh, Barry on the proposed North Main uh, free parking lot restroom. Uh, he has not stamped it yet, so it is not official document. It's for reference only. Uh, I'd like to put this on the next agenda for discussion uh, so we can move forward with it, so we can start putting out bids. Second. Okay. Thank you. All right, Mr. DeVito, do you have anything on no, Genesis? Here. Mr. McClung? <coughs> no, thank you. Mr. Mitchell? Is this comments or agenda? Or agenda. 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 Nothing. <laughs> Mr. Perkins piles out. Ms. Schneider? No. Ms. Ellen? <laughs> no. Council comments, Mr. DeVito? Uh, I'd like to thank Council. Uh, for their votes tonight. I think we did some pretty good things and uh, I'm proud of council. Mr. McClung. No comments. Mr. Mitchell. I'd like to thank all the 
various entities that have started uh, cleaning up the weeds on Spring Street and cleaning up weeds under the balconies and in different areas in the city. The attention that's being given to to making our city for our residents and our guests look look better than it was looking for a while. And the attention, just by focusing attention on that issue, there has been some action taken. And it would still be nice for the civic organizations to consider a joint effort that is ongoing where that there is no extra duplication of services, but they're all working together towards the, the goal of beautification of the city and or other aspects of it to make it uh, a pleasant experience. Thanks, sir. Ms. Snyder? I'd just like to thank everybody for having a safe, fun, eventful July 4th, although I tore my knee up again and didn't get to do the parade, which if we'd been in a truck, all of you guys, I could have, but thank you. It was awesome. I just didn't get to see it personally, but thank you for everybody coming out. Ms. Ellie? No, I don't have any comment. I have no comments. Most to adjourn. Second. Yes. All in favor, say aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you.